Last time we spoke, we chatted about the simple things you can do in your garden to attract wildlife. We'd really love to hear about the things you've managed to see in your garden. So for example, we were really excited last week to spot a heron coming to our pond, the first time ever. This week we're going to explore the fascinating relationship between plants, moths and bats. Welcome to this week's Garden Club. The trick to attracting specific wildlife species to your garden are the plants that you plant. So we all know that adult moths and butterflies like nectar. They need nectar. And this time of year, unfortunately, nectar supply is a bit low because many plants aren't flowering. So the daisies and dandelions in your lawn will help provide that, as well as things like forget me nuts, red campions, bluebells, uh, green elkinet, anything that you can get flowering at this time of year that has lots of nectar. What we forget, though, is that moths and butterflies also have a caterpillar phase to their life cycle. And that caterpillar needs a very specific food plant. Sometimes the food plant of a specific moth or butterfly is one unique species. So for example, the red campion here is the food plant for the campion moth. So if you want to have campion moths, for example, coming to your garden, you would need to not only provide the nectar, but you would also need to provide the actual species for the caterpillar food plant. Unless, of course, it's in this countryside already. So if you'd like to find out which moths are coming to your garden, you can trap them. Many moths are nocturnal, so a light trap is ideal. Now this monstrosity is called the Robinson's trap. It pulls in all the different moth species that are flying around overnight. In the morning, you can come and check them out. Obviously, there's much easier ways of checking for moths. If you simply leave a light on at night outside and wait for the moths to be attracted to the wall around it, it's another way to get your moths to come in and to identify which species have come through. So, you've now done all you can to attract the moth species to your garden and the moths are being eaten by the bats. So despite the negative press about bats and their potential link with COVID-19, they are actually really important and really interesting mammal species to attract to your garden. Just to note, there's no link between British bats and COVID-19. So, bats eat moths, but they also eat midges and mosquitoes. So some people really, really love bats because they can eat, up. some species can eat up to 3,000 midges a night. So that's your personal insect or mosquito repellent. So bats can also be attracted to your garden via your water body. So if you've got a small pond or a big pond, there'll be invertebrates coming from your pond and oftentimes you'll find bats flying over their pond to feed. So hopefully that's lots of tips to inspire you to plant plants specifically for wildlife species. So for those moth species, which then will attract your bat species, think about planting those food plants as well as the nectar plants. So to sum up, the wildlife in our garden depend on a variety of different plants. It's not just the beautiful showy flowers providing nectar for pollinators such as moths and butterflies that are needed, but also the food plant for the moth and butterfly caterpillars. If we really want bats in our garden, we need those moths. So we need to think about the species of plant to plant for both those stages. And remember, bats are really, really important because they provide us with free pest control. So, when thinking about your garden, choose your plants wisely. We would really love to hear about the wildlife that you've managed to attract to your garden, so please send us your pictures. And finally, next week, Sandy will be back talking about growing microherbs. Have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye.